pleasant good morning to all the saints gathered. I greet you in the name of our Lord, Savior, and the soon coming King Jesus Christ. It's totally a joy to see all of you in the house of the Lord. And those of you who are joining us live on Facebook, God bless you richly. And those who will join us on YouTube, we are so thankful. Blessings to you also. As we begin today, I encourage you to create that atmosphere of church within your own home as we go before God and ask God to manifest himself in and through our lives. Let's bow in his presence as we pray at this time. And dear gracious, merciful and loving God, we come to you thanking you for your goodness and your faithfulness. We pray that there be a fresh anointing of your spirit, an anointing that will destroy every yoke, lift every burden. Father, that you would saturate God our lives with your presence and with your power, that this service will be a service through which, God, you will just have your way in the midst of us. Yokes will be destroyed, burdens will be lifted, miracles will occur, and that, God, you will just, God, just do the supernatural. And we say thank you for having having your way in Jesus mighty name amen 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 at this time we do want to welcome um, the worship ministers as they lead us in a time of worship amen as we go before the Lord I encourage you those of you who are on Facebook to um, share with your family members and your friends encourage them to be a part of what is happening at this time and um, tell them we are on church has started and they need to be a part of church at this time. God bless you richly. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints of God. It's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. Come and just take a minute and just thank God for his goodness and his mercies this morning. Father God, we bless your name. Father, we glorify you. Father, we magnify your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you, we bless you, we bless your name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We're going to sing Hosanna in the highest this morning. Hallelujah. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna.
Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Amen. We thank you for that uh, worship ministers, for that wonderful time of worship. Amen. Before you have your seat, turn to your neighbor, say good morning, good to see you. Let your eyes smile as we bless each other and we have our seats. I want to greet those of you who are on Facebook. Blessings to you. And those of you who will join us on YouTube, God bless you richly. Such a joy to have you on. Amen. Being a part of our service. And we do count you part of our congregation as we worship, magnify, and glorify the Lord. Truly, God has been faithful. I do want to welcome those of you who are visiting with us for the first time. You're here um, in church or you are on Facebook or YouTube uh, viewing our service. Blessings to you. And God will take you from strength to strength and glory to glory. Amen. Uh, we want to remind you that we do have a prayer on Monday and Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. on the Zoom platform, as well as we have or as well as we have pray, uh, Bible study on Tuesday um, from 6 to 7:30. So we want to encourage those of our members to be reminded, get the idea and the password, password so that you can be a part of one of those services. Amen. So let me invite you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Exodus chapter 33. Exodus 33. And we begin you know, reading from verse 12, and we go from 12 to 17 of Exodus 33.
I want to extend the blessing to those, you know, for membership, those who are shut in, there are persons who are unable to come um, to church, and we want to um, want you to know that we have been praying for you, praying for you who have not been able to come into the house of the Lord. We are praying for you um, that God will strengthen you and minister unto you. Some of you are not well within your body. Um, I don't, don't want to call the names of those persons necessarily, but know that we love you and we have been praying for you. And I know you have been praying for us also. So God bless you richly. When you find Exodus 33, stand please. Um, if you found it, okay, you can stand as we go into the word of the Lord. The scripture declares, And Moses said unto the Lord, Say thou, sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in thy sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto me, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall let me read it here. <laughs> so shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. I want to share with us briefly on the, the importance of the presence of God. Yeah, the presence of God and the importance of the presence of God in this season as God has quickened this passage of scripture to my heart. So for the next two weeks, we are dealing with um, Exodus 33. We begin today and we continue next week, the Lord's willing. We do have a special service in church next week. So um, for those of our international viewing audience, and those of us who are part of the congregation, you will have to view the, the message on Facebook next week, the Lord's willing, or YouTube. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word, the entrance of your word. It brings light and it brings life. We thank you for the light and the life of your word. We pray that there be a fresh anointing of your spirit, one that will destroy every yoke and lift every burden. Saturate our lives with your presence and with your power. God, minister to me and through me, God, today, that God, your word would go forth with life and that which you intend for your people to hear will be said as you will utter life and you will strengthen us, taking us from where we are to where we need to be. And we give you praise for the victory in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. When we look at the life of the children of Israel, we recognize that their life mirror, or all life rather, mirror their life. And you, as you will look at the life of the children of Israel, where they could have had so many great experiences, so many moves. The children of Israel, who a generation who was delivered from slavery, who experienced 10, ten plagues in Egypt, who experienced the crossing of the Red Sea, who ate angel food, manna from heaven, and yet, whenever they faced some situation, they could be questioning God. And you look at their life all the way through, and they could have been very naughty as a people. And many of us could be very naughty also as a people, because the truth is, 
God has been so good to us. And we have experienced so many miracles that if we look back at our lives and we see what God has done, that he has been a faithful God. I tell you that provokes a praise when you think of the goodness and the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. As we look at this particular passage of scripture, we see the children of Israel behaving naughty again. In that, Moses went to the mount to receive the covenant from God, and he tarried. As he tarried, the children of Israel felt that he was taking too long. And they asked Aaron to make for them a golden calf, an image one of the images of Egypt, one of the gods of Egypt. Um, that says to me something very significant because when even though God took the children of Israel out of Egypt, Egypt was still in the children of Israel. God delivered them from slavery, yet slavery was still in them. I want to encourage us that we need to move from justification to sanctification. God would justify us or has justified us in that he has declared us righteous. But each one of us has to go through that sanctification process where he molds and he shapes our lives. Because even though we are delivered from slavery, slavery still, amen, calls us to its bondages. As we look here at the children of Israel and Moses tarrying, uh, you can't necessarily or you shouldn't necessarily fault them because I believe all of us have had situations where God has taken too long. Some of us have been praying for five years, 10 years, 15 years uh, for a situation to, to change 20 years and the situation has not changed and, and it seems as if God is sticking as if God is not touched with the feelings of my infirmity so that nothing is happening and there is no breakthrough there is no deliverance and many times we do our own thing Sometimes we even try to help God in our situation, even though God uh, is God and God has the perfect timing and God may be taking us through a process. At that time, we don't want to know that. All we want at that time is deliverance. I believe somebody knows what I'm talking about. So Moses tarried. The children of Israel made that calf. God was now angry with the children of Israel and so was Moses angry with them and God said to Moses I'm no longer going to go with you but I'm now going to send an angel Moses said to God God we don't want an angel but we want your presence for if your presence doesn't go with us we are not able to continue this journey Moses understood a truth that is uh, as seen in the book of First Samuel chapter 4 as we see a picture of what occurred when the Ark of the Covenant was taken, that symbolic presence of God that was taken from the children of Israel by the Philistines. The Bible says one of Eli's son, Phineas, he died in the battle and his wife, was giving birth at the time she called their son Ichabod as if to say the glory is departed for Samuel 4 21 the glory is departed from Israel and Israel went into chaos after the glory of God or the symbolic presence of God was taken the truth is if we don't have the presence of God in church we would not be having church church needs the presence of God God for church to be church. We didn't just come to, have, to be entertained by preachers and singers. We come to meet with God. We come for God to, to heal broken hearts.
hearts. Amen. It is said that a church is not a, a museum for saints, but a hospital for sinners. So we need to see persons saved and delivered and transformation occur within the life of individuals. We need the presence of God. So Moses said, God, if your presence is not going, we are not able to go. So we need to understand as we go forward uh, how significant is the presence of God. What is that presence of God? And firstly, I want to say to us there are different degrees or ways in which God manifests himself. So we understand from scripture first of all that God is the omnipresent God. In that God is present everywhere all the time at the same time. Um, God fills time and space. God is in the beginning and the ending. He is the eternal God. So that while things may catch, catch us off guard, it, doesn't, it didn't catch God off guard. God knows because he is omnipresent. We sing songs in our services, Welcome Holy Spirit, as if we are inviting God to be a part of our service. The truth is, God is already here. We don't need to invite him. All we need to do is acknowledge him because he's here. He is in the house. Amen. We came with him and we met him when we got here. He is the omnipresent God. We understand in Ezekiel chapter 4. 48 and verse 35 that he is Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is there. He is with us. He will not leave us nor forsake us. Isn't that good news that God is with me? Amen. Here, I, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, my God will be with me. He will not leave me nor forsake me, but he will be my God. In Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17, amen, the scripture declares, uh, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee. God is in the midst of us. God is here. He is with you. He is with me. He is in the pews that are empty as we have 25% uh, 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 attendance in terms of our services. God is with us. God is with those of you who are watching me on Facebook. Those of you who will view on YouTube. God is with us. He is the omnipresent God. Secondly, we understand as New Testament saints that God is present in the life of the believer. So, 1 Corinthians 3.16 tells us that our bodies are the temple of God. It, it, it is further, it continues that same theme in 1 Corinthians 6.19 that our bodies are the temple of God and it is important that we keep our temple holy because God lives within us. It is, it is what we call the born, the born again experience. That when you become born again, the Holy Spirit begins to live on the inside. It, it moves beyond religious activity and philosophy, but a, a transformation occur within the life of the believer, where the believer becomes born again of the Spirit of God. I recognize that there are persons who can be fanatical for their religion, but yet they are not born again. I thank God that I experience what it is to be born again. Amen. To be transformed by the power of God. That there are some persons, they're in church, but they, they don't know what it is to be born again. Cultured in Christianity, yet not born again. And sometimes I, I even recognize that that those who might be religious are even sometimes more fanatical than those of us who are born again. And that's why Jesus said unto 
the disciples, he said, many shall come in that day and they will say, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out devils? Have we not uh, done many mighty works? Have we not worked miracles? And Jesus will say, depart from me. He said, I will say, depart from me. I know you not because it's not what we do for God. It's who we are in God. Amen. That is important that we be born again. You see, we could take our money and we can build a church. We could take our money and we can feed the poor but if you are bo not born again first corinthians 13 says it will profit us nothing because we are not born again and this speaks of us becoming born again the bible says in romans chapter 8 and verse 9 if any man have not the spirit of christ he is not he's not of him amen so we have we need the spirit of god in us presence of God within us, presence of God within me, the presence of God within you, that we become born again. More than just religious activity. It is two things, you know, you say you don't argue politics and you don't argue religion with people because politicians lying right, left, right and center and people going down the road. I belong to this political party and they're not speaking truth. As a Christian, I believe hey, unless God called you to function as he called the Daniel to function in some of those capacities, you have to have your head on because some people, amen, they, they don't have any integrity in terms of their, their political, affili um, the political affiliation and their call in terms of giving governance to a nation. No integrity. Uh, so you have to be careful as a Christian who you're following and who, amen, you, you're standing with because not all have integrity. And then you have persons who just have religion. Your religion has no truth. You think simple in scripture, but religion could blind you. Religion could blind you. You could search all through scripture and not find it in scripture. And yet because the religion said to do it, you're doing it. Lord have mercy. That's the power of religion. So it's important, brethren, that we become born again. I want to encourage those of you who are viewing to be born again of the Spirit of God. Thirdly, when we talk about the presence of God, we say God manifests His presence through praise. So that as a Christian, it's important that you learn to praise the Lord. Christians need to praise the Lord. Uh, some persons are muted as if God has not been good to them, but God has been good to all of us. So you better learn to praise the Lord. Sometimes we are quiet and we, we, the, the, the walls of our, of our home and the uh, our vehicle that we drive in have not heard our praises. It has heard the soca music and all the other kind of music and, uh, and even gospel music, but it has not heard a personal praise. You would recognize in terms of us as a church, sometimes I would say, without the words of a song minister or a songwriter, how about giving God a praise out of the expression of your own heart? You form the phrases, you form the sentences out of God's goodness and faithfulness to you that you can open your mouth and you can praise the Lord. The psalmist says in Psalm 22 verse 3, But thou art holy, thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. So when the people of God begin to praise God, God inhabits the praises of his people. So it's important, brethren, that we praise the Lord. I know, you know, we wear masks and uh, I trust this season will be a growth in personal oral hygiene because some of us may be really challenged in terms of speaking. The mask is just for breathing. It's not necessarily for speaking because, you know, we might, may have to keep our mouths shut. Amen. But I still want to encourage us this morning, those of us who are in church, to open our mouths and to give God a note of praise because God has been a faithful God. God has been a good God. God has been a merciful 
merciful God. Those of you who are viewing on Facebook, come on, open your mouth and bless the Lord. Amen. Some of you could type a praise this morning. Amen. Because God has been good to you. Amen. We operating and we 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 we, we moving as if God has not been good. That the that our home and, and our family members could hear so many different things, but they can't hear hallelujah. They can't hear praise the Lord. They can't hear thank you, Jesus. And God has been faithful. Amen. Come on, somebody again. Open your mouth and give God some praise in the house. Come on, you're on YouTube and Facebook. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. God has been good. God has been faithful. We need to vocalize praise because praise is vocal. We need to be seen because praise is visible. We lift our hands and we worship the Lord because God has been good to us. When I was a, a teenager, just, I've just gotten saved. The pastor will invite us to take, off, take out our kerchiefs. And to, and to give God a wave offering. Well, I've been saved a long time. So then, Super Blue and Marshall and all the other soccer artists take over waving. And we, the church start to say that waving is of the world when waving is right there in the Bible. And we used to do it in church. I want to encourage those of us who are in church. And if you are in your home, get something and to wave this morning as we give God a wave offering. Amen. You see, praise is visible. When we begin to praise God, if you don't have anything, lift your hands. You have your hand and you can praise. Nothing happened to your hand. Come on, give God a wave offering. Hallelujah. Give God some thanks. Give God some praise. God has been a faithful God. We thank God this morning for his goodness and for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. And the Bible says when we are praising him sometimes we have to shout unto God with the voice of triumph because we are not in defeat but we are in victory. If you are in victory this morning, shout unto God in your victory. Amen. It's not what we are going through presently because it's not our destiny but it's God's opportunity to work a miracle. It's God's opportunity to show his peace that passes all understanding that we can praise him because he is a faithful God. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah for his goodness and for his faithfulness towards us. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 21, Jehoshaphat, he appointed singers to go before the army and to praise the Lord in beauty of holiness. I could just imagine, amen, no sword, no shield, just a choir robe on and you're going before the army against the enemy with the words, praise the Lord for his mercy endure it forever let me tell you that is any casual amen passive praise but that's a praise that comes deep from within the soul it is a spiritual praise it is an anointed praise it is a praise that tells the enemy you are defeated in the name of Jesus and when we begin to praise God we have to praise God saying devil you are defeated in the name of Jesus because we are going through something we are facing an enemy some of us are facing an enemy of sickness, an enemy of financial crisis, an enemy of, of, of social marital crisis. Open your mouth this morning once again and give God a praise and say, Lord, I thank you. I bless you. You are a faithful God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Sometimes our souls are cast down. Psalm 42.5. Sometimes your soul cast down. You ever feel cast down? And I could be preaching and say praise the Lord and you can't even get up to praise the Lord. You're viewing the screen and you can't even open your mouth and say praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Your, your, your bed next to you or, or, or your chair next to you, they can't even hear you say praise the Lord. Amen. You're in church and everybody praising, yet you yourself can't praise the Lord. Sometimes you have to speak unto your soul. I say, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him 
for the help of my countenance. I will yet praise him. I will bless him. Sometimes you just have to praise him because there's a manifestation of the presence of God when we begin to praise him. Fourthly, we see visible, a visible manifested presence when uh, God manifests himself. Himself. We see it in 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 10 when Solomon was dedicating the temple and that the priest couldn't stand to minister because the Shekinah glory of God filled the temple. A, a manifestation of the presence of God. The Shekinah glory of God manifested in the house as they began to worship the Lord. We see it in Exodus 24, 16, when Moses went on the mount and the glory of God rested on the mount. Exodus 24, 16, we see it in the New Testament in Luke 2, 9, when the, um, in the, with the birth of Jesus Christ, where the Bible says, and the glory of the Lord filled the place as the angelic choir began to sing. Acts chapter 2 and verse 3, on the day of Pentecost, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, as there, were that, as there was that sound of a mighty rushing wind. So I, I quoted for you Old Testament scriptures as well as New Testament scriptures. So it tells me whether you are an Old Testament saint or a New Testament believer, the manifested presence of God is for all of us. In my recent studies, I keep stumbling upon the conclusion of theologians who are saying miracles are not for today. Deliverance is not for today. Some things are not for today. Don't expect any cloven tongues of fire again. Don't expect any Shekinah glory again. I thought God was immutable. The God that we serve is the immutable God. He is unchangeable. So he's the same, the same God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Covenant that we are a part of. And if he's the same God, then we should expect a manifestation of the presence and the power of God. Hallelujah. In Joshua chapter 5 and verse 13 to 15, Joshua had what we call an epiphany, a physical manifestation of God when he saw the captain of the Lord's host. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Thy shoe, take thy shoe from thy foot, for the place wherein thou standest is holy. It happened in Isaiah chapter 6, when he had a vision, and he saw the Lord high and lifted up. His train filled the temple, heard the seraphim song of holy, holy, holy. And the Bible says he cried out to God. He said, woe is me. I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. We need that manifestation so that we could be before God and, and God could meet with us and we can cry as Isaiah cried, woe is me. Because woe is me and woe is you. Woe is all of us. We need a manifestation. And somehow, we are so cultured eh, that we could see not manifestations from God, but we could see manifestations from the devil. 
So I remember as a youth president, I would, uh, uh, at a particular time, there was this season where persons only used to be seeing spirits. Some young people and they only seeing spirit, 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 spirit. We went to this camp and all they were seeing is spirit, spirit, spirit. And I said to them, well, if we are Christians, we should see angels. Because the angel of the Lord encamp it round about them that fear him. But we are so cultured into seeing spirits. As a nation, uh, as a people, we are cultured into seeing larger bless and Dwen and Sukonian and Buck. And you hear somebody who's seeing something. I'm certain you who are here, you who are viewing, you would have heard of all those stories and people seeing spirits and all kind of negative things that they see. And not see a manifestation of God. I share with you a story for which I had when I had one of the great manifestations in my own life. As I was in church one night praying, it was 12 o'clock, I decided to stop at that time. I took off the lights in the church and was heading for the exit. And I heard God say, go by the altar and pray again. And rather going to the exit, I went to the altar, came to the altar, and I began to pray and cry out unto God. And while I was there praying, there was this manifestation of this big demon, a gigantic demon that stood on, uh, on my right as I face you of the church. Um, as if the church had no ceiling that night, and the giant of a demon um, as I began to pray, it was revealed to me that that is the prince of St. James. I humbly confess, every hair on my body stood. <laughs> it was terrifying. As I faced that image that night. Not too long come being in St. James. But God revealed to me the prince that governed this community. And I had to come face to face with that demon. To fight against that demon that night. And as I began to pray. As I mustered some strength within my being. In fact, there was nowhere to run. <laughs> And I got the courage and I began to pray. I began to pray. I began to pray. And I, and I started to go forward against that demon. And in the name of Jesus. 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 You see, sometimes we are in deep spiritual warfare. And we don't always get a manifestation of what we are fighting against. But all of us are in deep spiritual warfare. Where God may not necessarily reveal the demon that we are fighting. I can tell you that the image of that demon has stained my memory. I could literally give a, a visual illustration of what I saw. So of that particular demon I wouldn't do that this morning but it was horrifying terrifying of, of a demon a, with, with blood red eyes as it stood before me towering in the air the prince of Saint James that governs this community that is filled with rum and religion and I had to fight against that demon to get some victory and as I prayed and as I prayed and as I prayed Amen. God helped me and he sent some help for me. And I recognize the demon left and it moved away from the church. And as I looked above in the center of the church, I saw this giant also of an angel with its wings flapping. How as it hovered over the assembly as I looked up and I said, God, I thank you for sending help. 
You see, we learn in the book of Daniel that while we are praying upon the earth, there's a manifestation of principalities and powers in the heavens. Amen. The angels of God against those demonic powers fighting in the heavenly realm. Sometimes we don't understand what's happening on earth, but there is something happening always in heaven. And I tell you, brethren, we need a manifestation of the presence and the power of God that God will manifest himself because some of us have never seen an angel. Some of us have never seen the Shekinah glory of God. We live in a modern day period where churches have now placed some smoke machines on the altar and it send out smoke to imitate the, the presence of God. Some of them have some flashing lights, about 10 lights be on the altar and the lights all over the place as if the church is a discotheque. My goodness, I've gone to some churches, they paint the whole place black, all the walls black, the ceiling black, and it's only lies because it is like a concert hall. It is not, it's no longer a sanctuary. What a time to live in that they don't know what real and they don't know what synthetic because it's synthetic looking real, but then it's not alive, it's dead. It has all a men of Hollywood presentation, but there is no presence. There is no anointing, no yokes are destroyed, no burdens are lifted, no miracles occur. Brethren, we need to arrive at that place where God manifests himself, where yokes are destroyed, burdens are lifted, moving beyond the ordinary into the supernatural. The God that we still serve is still able to heal. He is still able to deliver. He is still able to give breakthroughs. Come on, if you believe that, amen, say me amen this morning because the God that we serve he is able and I'm saying God we need your presence Moses understood this he said God if we don't have your presence we can't go as a church if we don't have the presence of God how could we have the victory much professionalism and some churches have that some religions they need professionalism they need to start church at 9 o'clock and finish at 10 o'clock on the dot. They need to be well organized and well structured because you're dealing with people who are well organized and well structured and there is no room for any move of God. I remember the days when church went to at times four hours because we invited a move of God in the house of God. Now sometimes we're just limiting ourselves and this pandemic has even further limited us that we are no move because we just have one hour service and now one and a half hour service and we can't go beyond that amen and you have to stop within time else you break the law amen but i say god we need some laws being broken because you see amen not just there's a law in church but there is no law for your home Amen. So that while you're home, you can spend an hour, you can spend two hours, you could just spend that time in prayer. You see, they could limit us in church, but they can't limit us in our homes. They can't limit us, amen. Otherwise, because the God that we serve, hallelujah, he wants to move, amen. He wants to send some fire, some good, hallelujah, Holy Ghost fire upon the church that people who operate are like they're dead. They need some fire to wake them up. They need some Holy Ghost fire to shake them up, amen. They need some good Holy Ghost fire to utter some praises unto God. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise this morning and say God I want some fire <laughs> hallelujah you see when God manifests himself God has a purpose it was Bob Sorch who says the, the presence of God is the earmark of the church so that if a church doesn't have the presence of God a church is a dead church I've heard of stories where persons say uh, they, they, there was this witch who used to visit the church. In fact, I read in, in, in that book, he came to set the captive free where, you know, witches went to church. You know, the witch, the witch come into church every Sunday morning. The warlock come into church every Sunday morning and they enjoying the preaching and they enjoying the worship service. Let me tell you, the devil is a liar. 
And I say, God, not in this church. Not in St. James Pentecostal Church. No witch coming in this church. No warlock coming and sit and be, uh, uh, and be comfortable. If they come in, they will be delivered in the name of Jesus. Uh, that there will be a mighty breakthrough. And I've had my own experiences as a minister. Going to, 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 to a particular church and, 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 and the same people who, who were singing were the same people who were... Who, demon possessed female voice speaking in a male tone and I had to stop and be casting out devils amen because as I began to preach and the presence of God filled the place and there was a manifestation of the presence and the power of God deliverance occur amen amen those who were in bondage those who were in prison were now free from the powers and the clutches of hell brethren we need to arrive at that place where when our preaching is not simply simplified amen by professionalism and eloquence but it is infused by the presence and the power of the almighty God God help us God help this church in this last day help us oh God to come alive with the fire of Pentecost burning within our own hearts burning within our own spirit there's a demon of depression. A demon of depression. Frustration. Let me tell you, that demon of depression causing sadness. Amen. I don't know it, if it, some of you operate like it didn't come after you. It came after me. That demon, you're just, you're just feeling depressed. You're just feeling way down. Hey, that spirit of fear depressing you. You want to live and you can't live. You want to be happy and you can't be happy. You want to go places. You can't go anywhere. You just seem in seemingly in bondage that demon of depression and i say god and as i as god dropped this word within my spirit i hear god saying that's why we need the presence of god to be manifested because you see that demon of depression it has imprisoned some people they can't smile they can't be happy they can't just live because you're always in a straight jacket nobody touch me stay keep your distance everybody walking like a toy soldier so you know militant and organized and we're keeping our distance and we are structured let me tell you the devil is a liar ah when the presence of God comes the peace of God comes a peace that passes all understanding when the presence of God comes the power of God comes there will be healing there will be deliverance there will be restoration there will be breakthroughs there are things that are happening within many of our lives where there are some Jericho walls that are standing before us and nothing is happening but I hear God saying those Jericho walls will fall today in the name of Jesus because there, is a, there will be a manifestation of the presence of God we need the presence. We need the presence of God. We need the presence of God flowing. How shall it be known? How shall it be known? That we are from grace. How shall it be known that we are different? How shall it be known that we are the real church? How shall it be known that we are the place for people to come to. How shall it be known? It will be known because of the presence of God. The presence of God. We need the presence of God. We need grace. I close with grace. How shall it be known that we have found grace? Moses was specific. How shall it be known that we have found grace? Grace. Unmerited favor. How shall it be known? And all of us need grace. I need grace. You need grace. We need grace. You're viewing today. You need grace. We need grace. We need unmerited favor. Of God to rest upon us, to flow in us and through us, that He will grant unto us that strength that we need as His people. I say, God, 
this morning give us grace. Because we learn in 2 Corinthians 12 where Paul says, where God said to Paul, my grace is sufficient. Grace is always sufficient. There is, there is no such thing as the insufficient grace of God. Anytime what you're going through, God's grace is not able to take you through what you're going through. It is not the grace of God. It, it is something else that you are depending upon that is falling short because the grace of God is sufficient. You're depending upon your, your loved one. You're depending upon your family member. You're depending upon your finances. You're depending upon your professionalism, your excellence. That is what you're depending upon. When it comes to the grace of God, the grace of God is sufficient. How shall it be known, O God, that we have found grace in thy sight? That we are a separated people. A people called into the kingdom for such a time as this. I say, God help us. God help us. God help me as a pastor. I had a conversation recently with a young man as we were talking about individuals who I no longer see or who has left us. And I said to him, well, I am free because they're no longer under my covering. And after I said that, I said, well, I still have to pray for them, but they, they're no longer under my covering. And, and, I, and I, we had a whole discussion. And by the night, when I was laying to sleep, I, a thing weighed upon my heart. And, and I, in the morning when I arose the next morning, it weighed upon my heart again. As God began to bring persons who have left us, but they're still under my covering. And I said, God help me. So I began to call the names of persons who have left, who are exposed to the enemy because they have moved from under the covering. Move from under the presence of God. They're no longer where they're supposed to be. They're under another presence. Another presence fill their home, fill their vehicle. Now the presence of God. The presence of God is not tranquility. It's not inspiration. It is the power of God that is able to transform lives, to break yokes, to lift the burdens. There is a difference. We are able to differentiate between the two. You know it. And persons have moved from that place. So my prayer as I'm there before God, I'm saying, God, cover your people. Because they, are, they have exposed themselves to the enemy. Parents have, are now exposing their children. There are some children who have not known church in this season. Because they have kept their children home. Let me tell you, you're exposing yourself from the enemy. And God says you need his presence. Oh God, help us. Help us, God. Let me tell you this. And I'm closing. If the children of Israel, who could experience 10 plagues in Egypt. 10 plagues. They experienced in Egypt. 10 plagues. Experience a cloud that covered a million people. A pillar of fire that gave them warmth in the night. Plenty fire. And so strategically placed 
that the, that the warmth is evenly distributed throughout the camp. So it's not that I am closest to the fire, so I'm getting 100 degrees heat, and you're further away, so you're getting about 50 degrees. No, evenly distributed. That everyone can experience the power of God. God solidifying the walls of the Red Sea to create a, a passage, a channel through it so that the children of Israel could walk on dry ground. They could eat angel food as it fall from the heavens like rain. And yet, every situation that faced them anew, they could doubt God. Let me tell you, who am I? Who am I? Who are you? To think that you're so spiritual that the devil can put some traps and some obstacles to trip us over. The water didn't come from a mountain. The water came from a rock. It's one thing for water to come from the mountain. It happens all, all the time. But it, comes, it came from a rock. God ensure that they knew that this water wasn't coming from no underground reservoirs anywhere. This water was coming from heaven. God was working a miracle within their lives. And yet they could still trip over. Yet every one of them who were born in Egypt had so much of Egypt within them that they didn't make it to the promised land. Brethren, we are born in sin and shapen in iniquity. We need to make our calling an election show. It's not a time to play church, but it's a time to be serious with God. There's a real devil, a real, real demons, real principalities, real powers fighting against us. How do we fight it? With flesh and blood? No! We fight with spiritual weapons, the word of God. We fight with prayer. We fight with the fire of God burning within our own spirit so that when each one of us face our demon we are able to go forward in the name of the Lord and say Satan I rebuke you in the name of Jesus this morning we want to pray come on stand with me as we go before God and we don't want any spectators this morning Everybody praying. Come on, children, I want you to pray. Uh, I want you to pray this morning. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying. We are saying, God, help us. We need some fire. We need some fire. We need some good old-time Pentecost fire. That uh, the fire of God will burn within our hearts. Uh, oh, we want to come against that demon. That demon of this community. That demon in the community that we have come from. That, that generational demon that fighting us. Uh, generational demons uh, that holding us down. That we can't even be happy even though we have certain blessings satan we come against you come on we're doing warfare this morning satan we rebuke you we come against every principality we come against every power we come against spiritual wickedness in high places we bind the works of the devil satan we rebuke you we rebuke that demon that demon of slothfulness that demon of slumber we come against that demon we come against every demon of depression every spirit of fear we come against everything that comes against us in this season comes against the church comes against the believer we come we come against we war against this morning against the works of the devil satan we bind your works we bind your works we pull on your strongholds come on to there are those of us who know what it is to pray there are those of us who know what it is to do some spiritual warfare come on somebody we are praying this morning in the name of jesus we are breaking strong we are breaking strongholds. We are breaking strongholds in the name of Jesus. Satan, we rebuke you. We bind your words. Oh, we have been in another presence. But this morning, we make a decision to be in the presence of God. The Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Somebody needs joy this morning. Somebody needs peace. Somebody needs strength. Ah, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray that you will bring breakthroughs. 
Hallelujah. 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 Oh, those Jericho walls, those Red Sea experiences, blockages within our lives where we have reached a ceiling and we can't go forward. We have reached a ceiling. We can't go higher. We break that stronghold. We come against that demonic stronghold right now. That generational curse that has kept us in poverty. That generational curse of disease that has been affecting our body. We come against that demonic power in the name of Jesus that is preventing us from go from growing that preventing us from going to a higher level in the name of Jesus oh God we break we break we break we break every stronghold in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus there are some things the doctors can't explain in terms of what is happening with our bodies but in the name of Jesus we break that stronghold in the name of Jesus we speak life we speak life we speak life we prophesy life in our bodies we prophesy strength we prophesy healing we prophesy deliverance in the name of Jesus oh we prophesy deliverance this morning that restoration will come restoration 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 oh God we declare restoration restoration of families restoration restoration marriage restoration in the name of Jesus uh, 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 financial restoration. Over the years this morning we are declaring that the caterpillar, the canker worm, the palmer worm and all that the enemy has stolen, we come against and we de reclaim the blessing of God upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for doing this mighty work in the mighty name of Jesus and we thank you for the victory. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We praise you and we bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's just begin to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you're in your home. To begin to praise the Lord. Come on, lift your hands. Even though you're in your home, don't just view the screen. I want you to screen. I want you to lift your hands. As I'm watching the computer, lift your hands and lift your voice. Ah, let, you, let your home hear the praises of God this morning. Let your homes, let your neighbors and all hear the praises of God as you shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Amen. We are shouting victory. We are declaring victory in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, God, for doing this mighty work in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together and give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Amen. As we, amen, seek to close our service on Facebook, we do want to lift the morning's offering. So let me encourage you to give unto the Lord. Um, those of you who are viewing, viewing online, um, there, there will be an account number on your screen whereby you can write down that account number so that you can give, give an offering and give of your tithes. I remember just thinking about me lifting offering and I said, my goodness, I've been casually lifting the offering, but lifting offering is no casual thing because when we give, we are actually worshiping the Lord with our tithes and with our offering. So we thank God this morning for what he has done and what he will continue to do in Jesus' mighty name. Lift your offering with me. Father, in the name of your dear son, Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity of giving, our giving of our tithes, giving of our offering, offering in different areas that you have placed within our hearts to do continue to bless us and minister unto us as your people that God your word declares that you will open the windows of heaven and you will pour a blessing that the hand of God will be upon us and you will manifest yourself mightily in the mighty name of Jesus and everyone say amen amen
the ushers will wait on us as the worship ministers will lead us in worship and those of you who are online write on the number and you can sing the praises of the lord as we lift the offering god bless you hallelujah i'm gonna dance and praise him it doesn't matter what comes my way no greater one lives inside of me his name is jesus i'm born a winner thank God for another time in his presence. Amen. And uh, to all of our membership, we do have a special um, appreciation service this coming weekend. So you need to get the Zoom link and, and the ID, the password to be a part of the um, pastor's appreciation service this coming weekend. So you just contact us um, to get that information so that you can be a part of what we have next week, the Lord's willing. You don't want to miss it. Amen. We want to sing the doxology. And after we have sung the doxology, we uh, will be dismissed from Facebook. God bless you richly. Praise God from whom.